It's my joy to be here with you this morning. And if I'm right, I think uh, there are more um, sons and daughters here this morning than the fathers and the mothers. Am I right? Yeah, this seems to be a young church. And I'm happy about it. And um, this is a day that we celebrate the Father's Day. And so uh, God is just reminding us that we should honor our fathers. Especially in the Bible, you see, you know, the fathers have a very important role. And um, it starts with the history of Abraham. And Abraham is actually, he's called Abba Haram. Abba is something, a very precious word in Hebrew. Abba means father. And know those days, in the early days, in the Old Testament times, I don't know how they prayed to God. They didn't even want to pronounce his name, Yehovah. Or even if they wrote G, O, G, God, they would just leave off this O and then just put a G and a G. Because God is a very highly respected, revered God, and so they did not dare to call him as Father. But then when Jesus came, he introduced us to God of our Father. Blessed be the holy name of the Lord. And so we can call him today as Abba Father. And uh, sometimes when we are not able to do that, God has filled us with the Holy Spirit of God. That The Bible says that we can call him, speak to him as Abba Father. What a tremendous privilege. And this morning, I think most of the young people here, sons and daughters, you must be having your own parents, your fathers and your mothers. And if they are still alive, this is the day that you can just um, give them a gift like uh, Pastor Chris, Pastor John gave to his father but a key to happiness. Amen? And maybe, you know, when you can, you can just call your father, if he's here, just go and express that you love him. You're thankful to him for all that he has done unto you because he has been the person who has loved you, cared for you, brought you up. And so, you know, it's our uh, privilege to thank uh, God for the fathers and thank the fathers as well. This morning, I received... Uh, uh, an email from my daughter, two daughters I have in Canada. So both of them have sent emails. And yesterday I had an email from my first daughter. And uh, this morning I have an email from my second daughter. She's also married. And this is what she writes. Happy Father's Day, Daddy, from us both. We are so blessed and proud to have you. As my dad, I love you so much. There's something more, but this is enough for me. You know, when the daughter comes to the father and tells him, Father, I love you so much. I'm proud of you. That's so wonderful. I have two um, daughters and a son. And already my son has already told me that I am the best father for him in the whole world. So we are thankful to God for the father's. And, um, you know, the Bible says that we have to honor our, our fathers. You read in Deuteronomy and also in Exodus 20, 12, and Matthew also it says, you know, that uh, honor your parents, honor your fathers. And so that's what the Bible says. In the sight of God, fathers are very important. They're significant. Why? Because... They play an important role in our lives. In my life, my father had played a, a very important role. He has loved me. Uh, his love surpassed anybody's love. I have not much time to say this, but he loved me so much. Sometimes, you know, it was so embarrassing. For example, um, when I was um, a boy of 14 years old, one day I had a stomach pain, unbearable stomach pain. My father came back to, from his office and he saw me. And he said, son, what's the problem? I told him, dad, I have a severe stomach pain. And uh, he just carried me, lifted me up, put me on his shoulder, started running on the road, on the street, towards the hospital because... Those days, we didn't have call taxis or cars. We didn't have that. But he didn't want to wait. So to give me the treatment, he just put me on his shoulders, carried me literally 
started running. I felt, you know, if you're a 14 year old boy and your dad is carrying you on your shoulder running on the streets, I felt so embarrassed. I said, Dad, please let me down. I can also come. He said, No, no, son, I must carry you. I can never forget that love. There's so many incidents in my life. But you know, God also says that, no, uh, in Deuteronomy you know, 1 and, uh, you know, verse number 31, God says, while in the wilderness, I carried you as a man carried his son. So we should, be, we should be grateful for fathers who really cared for us. And um, as young people, you know, it's our, it's our privilege to go and tell the fathers, our father, uh, daddy, we thank you because you cared for me. We thank you because you love me so much. There was a man who was brought up by his uh, father in a, in a very nice way. And the father cared for him in every way that was possible, educated him, provided everything for him. And it was the dream of the father that he should become a, a very good person in the society. And the son studied, graduated, got a very good degree, applied for jobs. Then he got a job in one of the finest companies. And his father was so proud of him. He said, Dad, he showed me. He showed him. This is the, uh, you know, uh, my, my, my job. That, uh, and so I have, to, I have to go and join. And the father was so happy. So the boy went and joined the job. At the end of the month, he got uh, his salary check. And so he came back uh, to his home. And he met the father and he said, Dad, this is my first salary. And I want to give it to you, the entire amount. And the father was so happy. Now this is what we can do. Go to our father and say, Father, you loved me so much. You did so much for me. And so here I give you this gift. Or I just tell you that I love you so much. And um, this morning, you know, I just want to say a few things. What the children, if there are fathers here, what the children expect from their fathers. Number one and the most important thing is undivided, unconditional love for the children. In the family, you know, when the father shows love to the children, the children are able to grow up in a secure situation. In some of the families, the fathers are not able to do that. They are busy people, and they don't have time for the children. But fathers, I tell you, take some quality time to spend with your children. This morning I was telling uh, in the first service, I don't know if it was the first or the second. You and dad was getting a little bit confused, I think. You know? <laughs> okay. It was the second service that I have seen many families, but this family of Pastor David Prakasam is very, very special. Because I saw something in the family which I didn't see in many other families. That the father and the, ch and the, and the sons, they always move like close friends, teasing each other. And I think you just now saw what Chris was doing, you know. They're close friends. In some of the families, you know, there is no communication. The father does not talk uh, to the wife or to uh, the sons or the daughters. But this family is a blessed family. And I think, you know, that is something wonderful. To be with the father, to communicate. I had a father, as I told you, you know, that he cared for me. But at the same time, you know, he loved me. And uh, he was always there to protect me. Um, even in my failures, he never disowned me. As fathers, you know, the, the, the responsibility of the father is to encourage their own children because they should be able to identify God's image in the children. When I was um, admitted in the school, the, the first class, I told this morning that uh, I was so stupid at that time that when I wrote the examinations and uh, after the, when the results were uh, published uh, or put up on the notice board in the school or whatever, the teachers called my father and said, Sir, we cannot promote your son from the first standard to the second standard. Why? 
Because they said, your son has got zero in all the, in all the papers. So how can you send him to second class? But my father, he didn't scold me. He didn't shout at me. Why are you like this? You're dull-headed. He never said that. He told the teachers, he said, please promote him. I will take care of his education. Because he said, I know my son is an intelligent son. And then afterwards, I don't know whether I was intelligent or not, but it's my father's encouragement, the words that he spoke. And then they sent me, just pushed me up to the second, class, second standard with much hesitation. But my father spent a lot of time with me, educating me. And uh, I can tell you that, you know, afterwards, when I came to the fourth standard, I wrote the examination, and the teachers called my father and said, well, we don't want to send your son from fourth standard to the fifth standard. We want to send your son from fourth standard to the sixth standard. Because, you know, it changed my life. And uh, that's all because of my father. And I remember one day, you know, my father had some of the officers uh, visiting him. And he was talking to them about me. My father was so proud of me. And he was telling them, uh, my son is uh, very good, and you must look at his handwriting. And uh, he has beautiful handwriting. And so they, they just wanted to see my handwriting. He called me from there. Hey, you bring your school notebooks. I want to show them how you write. So I brought the, my notebooks, and they were I had written. And he told the people, the, the officers, look here, how beautiful is my son's handwriting. So I cannot for this. It just it gave me so much of confidence in my life. And this, I think, is very important. Fathers, we need to show love to our children. At the same time, you know, fathers need to have um, a character in their lives. Because when children look up to the fathers, they don't want the fathers to be lazy, to be unrighteous, to be doing things which are not right. In the, in, in the society, but before God, they should be honest people. So fathers must be fathers of character. Many people take this very lightly. Fathers, you must know that your children are watching you. And if you're not walking in righteousness, they will not walk in righteousness. But if you walk in righteousness, they also will be able to follow you. You should be a role model for your children. When the fathers are men of integrity, children want to learn to be people of integrity. You know, the fathers are not only needed in the house, in the families. Fathers are also needed in the church. Church needs fathers in the Lord. Fathers who are role models. Fathers who seek the Lord. Fathers who are godly people should be able to encourage the whole family to go to, the, go to church every Sunday. Fathers who should encourage the whole family to come together and pray to the Lord God Almighty to seek God. Fathers should be the priests in the family. Because, you know, when the children want to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, it's the father who sets the example. My father, I remember that every day in the morning. Sometimes I used to get up early in the morning uh, because we had some four uh, cows which they used to take uh, to the hospital for milking and give, selling the uh, milk to the hospital. Sometimes I used to get up at 4 o'clock because of the noise. It was my uncle, my father's sister's uh, husband. He used to take the cows to the hospital. And I still remember those days when I, because of the noise, I would get up. I was a little boy, probably, yeah, I was very, very young. Probably within 10 years. At that time itself, I loved the Lord very much because of the example of my mother and my father. And uh, when I used to get up, uh, because I loved the Lord Jesus, I didn't know anything like the experience of salvation or whatever it is. Um, two things I would pray for. I would just kneel on the mat and then I would say, Lord Jesus, come soon. 
I don't remember who taught me that kind of a prayer because I wanted to see the Lord Jesus Christ. And the second thing is I prayed, Lord, I want to see you. These are the two things I would just go on praying. And when I would get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I would see my dad sitting in his bed. And then he would be having the word of God in his lap. And he would be reading every time I noticed that. And so that brought us close to the Lord. And I can say that the very fact that, you know, I am somebody in the world that people could recognize. That I am somebody in the world that God has recognized me and blessed me exalted, elevated me in every way. It's all because of the prayer of my father, the prayer of my mother. It is so important that we should have prayer in our families. Seek the Lord. And then also it is important that the fathers, they should not only be men of character, they should be godly people, the priests in the family. And one more important thing is in many of the families, the problem comes because the father is so busy and he has got no love for the wife. When the father loves the mother, when children see that, uh, when there is an atmosphere of love in the family, children will grow in a healthy, psychological, spiritual, emotional circumstance. But if in the family, if there's a lot of fighting and quarreling between the father and the mother, sometimes the father would tell the children, hey, tell your mother this, I want this. Or the mother will say, tell your father not to do this. So that is not a, that's not a good, healthy situation. But if there is a situation, if there is a, if there is a, a, um, a, an atmosphere of love in the family, that will be the greatest thing. And uh, fathers, I would just exhort you this morning that when you recognize that God has given the children to you, the Bible says in Psalm 128 and verse, uh, I think Psalm 127, children are a heritage from the Lord. So it's God's gift to you. Children, God has given you the gift of children. They are very valuable. So when they, when they grow, they should grow as men and women of God. They should be able to represent God in their lives. And um, uh, in, a, in a healthy family, though, it's, it's a father's duty and responsibility to see that the children grow in the, such a beautiful atmosphere. And it's such a joy for us that we're able to celebrate the Father's Day. But above all, about, about our physical father, we must be able to represent, realize that we have a heavenly father. And he cares for us all the time. He is the one who provides for us all the time. He loves us unconditionally. Sometimes you may make mistakes, but still it's all right. When you can always come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry I made this mistake. He loves us. I remember that many years ago. I was sitting in a class like this. Of course, I was going through a, 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 a discipleship class. And um, uh, I was, I don't know, there, there was a teacher, a lecturer who was teaching from the Bible. But I was not listening to it because I was just focusing on God. I was in a time of prayer. And um, suddenly I heard a voice. It was a clear, small, audible voice. And I heard God speaking to me. And he said, I am your father. I don't know if I can just bring you the, you know, the effect of what God spoke to me. Jesus, I love him very much. Because he's the one who gave his life for me. He died for me. Whenever we think of God the father, God the father is a righteous person. A just take, magnificent, full of power and glory. He is the one who decides, God the Father. Well, I'm not saying that they are all different, but you know, in my mind, Jesus, yes, I loved him. But God the Father, as you address him as a father, you know, he was always kind of one whom I feared always. 
but that morning when god spoke to my heart i am your father i understand the full impact of what is said because as i told you already i had a an earthly physical father who was the most loving person i loved him very much i knew him as my father jesus i knew him i know him as my savior but here god the father was speaking to me that he is my father and in the class i just broke down and i was in tears i said god i never saw you in this light that you loved me so much and his love was flooding my soul i just you know i was sobbing and i was weeping and the next man when he he just asked me benjamin is something wrong do you have any problem i said no then he he thought maybe you know i'm just thinking of somebody in finally he was asking uh, is your father alive i said no is your mother alive i said no and he said from today onwards i will be your father and i will be a mother i just wanted to tell him sorry i'm not just trying for my earthly father or my earthly mother but god is speaking to me that he is my father that means you know he is the one who carried me in all my difficulties you know he is the one who carried israel from the land of egypt he is the one who delivered for you and me from all kinds of our problems he is the one who redeemed us by his precious blood when moses brought the people people from israel there was a lamb which was slain but this is not just an ordinary lamb he is the king of kings the lord of lords and god of gods and he had compassion on us he had love for us he left everything came down to this earth and he shed his precious blood so that we would become his own children his sons and his daughters he carried them through in the wilderness as a father carries his son he carried them through the red sea when the red sea was standing before them he spoke to the red sea and i don't know what happened he divided the red sea that the people of god could go and he was carrying them on his back when they had no food when they cried he is a, he was a god the father who loved them so much that he sent manna from heaven he didn't want them to go hungry they didn't have water in the wilderness but he told moses moses strike the rock speak to the rock second time and waters came out of the rock and he was the one who was able to quench their thirst friends this morning he is the father god to us who can deliver you all from all your bondage he is the one who redeemed you by his precious blood he is the one who can make a way for you in the red sea he is the one who can feed you with a heavenly manna every day he is the one who can quench your thirst by his holy spirit we are his children because of his blood and so this morning apart from telling our earthly fathers thank you for caring me it is time that we tell god the father lord god we just love you because you loved us so much we want to thank you god because you brought us out of this bondage from slavery you made a way for us lord and you made us your own children by your blood it's not only the blood of jesus christ that brought us to him as sons and daughters god filled us with his holy spirit and the holy spirit is in us this morning if you are filled with the holy spirit of god rejoice in him and pray to him abba father daddy daddy we just want to thank you i just want to thank you because that's a privilege that god has given to us by the blood of jesus christ and through the holy spirit of god and you'll also we see that you know in the bible when god made man and woman he breathed his breath into the nostrils you are a god's child because of his breath in you you are god's child because god jesus christ he shed his blood for you you are god's child because of his holy spirit that is in you you must be happy to call upon him every day with boldness with faith lord i just call upon you because i am your son i am your daughter not only that you are god's son and god's daughter because god's breath is in you two days back when i was in early morning prayer suddenly the holy spirit showed me something wonderful he said when god gave his son to us 
he gave everything that is that belongs to him in heaven heaven belongs to us heaven belongs to you everything when you have jesus you have everything for your life so this morning you now we should be able to rejoice there is the blood of, by the blood of jesus christ by the holy spirit of god we are god's children and by the breath of god you are god's children last week my daughter who sent this um, email to me she spoke to me and said that you know um it the scientists have found out that that man's dna is in his breath scientists have found out that man's dna is in his breath if if there is a father he in the son carries his dna but even the breath of a man carries his dna and she said dad do you know what when god breathed his breath listen to me we have got god's dna in us how wonderful we have a great god and so would you not just bow down your heads along with me and say to our god the father lord we thank you because you birthed me lord you you made me your son and your daughter father i just want to thank you that all through my life you have been with me you have blessed me and i want to hand it over to pastor chris to lead us and continue the service god bless you Amen. Come on, give a good hand clap. And uh, it was a fantastic word this morning. God is our heavenly Father. Amen. He's a good God. Maybe you had a good father, or maybe you didn't have a good father. But the truth is, God is an excellent father. He is the best father that anyone can have. Can we bow our heads in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you for the fantastic word we heard, God. for speaking to us this morning even even from his life lord father how you have led him and even in our lives it is so true god you carry us when we go through tough times god father you guide us you lead us god today we just declare and say to you that there is no one like you god there is no one who compares to you you are a fantastic father god you are a glorious father god we just love you God we we just come and we say thank you God. There's no way we can express our gratefulness or gratitude to you but just our words God we say thank you so much Lord. We give you all the praise, all the glory and all the honor Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week this week as you go out as you heard the word. If you've not yet wished your father wish him a happy Father's Day and uh Be nice to your dad today. All right. Have a great week. We'll see you again next week, and all the best. God bless you.